just yarn, worsted weight, and a, of course, number four worsted weight. It is acrylic. It comes with 131 yards. It is a 60 gram ball. I actually really like the way it's working up, and I found it at my local Dollar Tree. So, very good price on that. We are doing a single rib stitch, so it's purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. For this pattern, we are only using knit and purl stitches. There are no E wraps. And go ahead and take this off. And this is made in a medium size, which is your purple pegs. But as you can see on my wrist, I have smaller hands. So for an adult, I would suggest either use a number five weight yarn instead of a four or go up to your large size if you would like to use the same kind of yarn. Let's get to how I've marked this loom. I know it looks like a mess. I can't find my, I have a bunch of really super cute loom uh, stitch markers. But to help me, I mark my pegs I purl. So if it has a weird stitch marker on it, I'm gonna purl that peg. If it's not stitch marker, if there's no stitch marker, then I will knit stitch that peg, except for this one. That is my peg one, my starting peg, which is actually zero two. Back here is peg one. The black peg will always be the original peg one. If I say zero one and zero two, I'm referring to the wedges. Let's go ahead and get this thing cast on. So first of all, you wanna take your loom adjuster, place it in between pegs 10 and then if you keep counting around 23 your purple pegs it's our technical medium size but your gauging swatching yarn you use does make a large difference we are ch doing a chain cast on 26 pegs starting with peg zero two, let me zoom this in a bit. See the chain cast on, we have a slip knot. And you wanna make sure it's your working yarn that's slipping and not like your tail here. But you put the working yarn behind the peg, use this loop you created to tighten it up. This first one is really the most awkward and then I like to put that string under and you'll forget about that until later whenever you weave it in. The loop has two strings from here on out. These two strings of the loop will go behind the peg. And then you will tighten it up. Of course, my loop doesn't need to be that long. Almost back to the beginning. Now this last loop I'm putting on the last peg. Sometimes you'll notice that I put it on this peg instead. Since I'm using the true knit and true purl stitches for this pattern, it just honestly, it makes it easier to start out if I just put the loop here because this is gonna be a true knit stitch. Here's where people can get confused because the true knit stitch and the true purl stitch are very, very similar. This stitch is purled. You can see I've got it marked, so your working yarn goes below the stitch on the peg, and you pull it up and you've created a new loop. You take the old loop off and you put the new loop on. Now for a knit stitch, it's the opposite. Working yarn goes above the stitch on the loom, not below. And this new stitch you're pulling through, you're pulling it through, it's being pulled down instead of up but then you still do the same thing at the end. Take the old stitch off, put the new one on. I'll do a few more. Here is a purl. Here is a knit. And it may take you a little while to get used to doing them together. Sometimes I will have to tell myself, okay, this is purl down, because the yarn is below, knit up, because the yarn is above, Pearl down, whatever you got to tell yourself. But go ahead and do round one through six, your single rib stitch. 
and in rounds seven through 10, you're going to do just the straight knit stitch. Cut your working yarn, make sure it's at least five inches long. Uh, you need enough so that you can close up the opening that you will end up with between the finger opening and the thumb opening. All right, now we need to move this wedge. We're gonna take the stitch from peg zero one and move it over to peg 10 and then the stitch from peg 0 2 over we'll take that working yarn push it down the middle but move that one over to peg 23 so peg 10 and 23 will now have two stitches on them go ahead and push all those down so that it is out of the way for now Loosen this up and then push it up to the next set of purple pegs and tighten it up. The thumb area is worked over 10 pegs. So you will have pegs between peg 13 and 20 and you're going to put another wedge between peg 11 and 22 but this one will be going in the opposite direction. wedge up but peg zero two on this wedge is still your starting peg we will be casting on just these ten pegs in a circle with our chain cast on the same as we did for the body Five rounds of single rib stitch, which is knit one, purl one, and then two rounds of knit stitch. We no longer need this middle wedge, so we will take the stitch from peg zero one and place it on peg 22 and the stitch from peg 02 and place it on peg 11 and we can loosen that one up take the wedge out and put it over to the side go ahead and pull the rest of your knitting up back where it was on your pegs what you are doing now is this area right here before the decrease. So 10 rounds of knit stitch. So from row 18 to row 27. Let me show you. When you get to the pegs with two stitches on them, treat both the stitches like one. You are working in the round. Two 
to decrease for the wrist, we will move the stitch from peg 13 and place on zero 01. And the peg and the stitch from peg 20 and place on peg zero 02. Now we loosen this up just enough to move it and you're going to move it down in between the next set of pegs that have stitches on them which would be peg, let me see what is this, peg 12 and 21. You will work two rounds of the knit stitch. Your first round there will be two stitches on both of these pegs. Treat both of those stitches on each peg as one stitch. Our second decrease, we will be taking the stitch from peg 12, placing it on zero 01. Take the stitch from peg 21, place it on zero 02. Loosen this up and scoot them in. It will be between peg 11 and 12. 22 sorry yeah 11 and 22 now you're going to work two more rounds and then you'll do one more decrease which will be the stitch from peg 11 to zero 01 the stitch from peg 22 to zero 02 you will decrease it push the wedge in and you'll be back to your original two pegs We are at the arm and cuff section of the glove. So for round 32 through 51, that is 20 rounds, you are going to do your knit stitch. And then from round 52 through 56, that's five rounds, you're gonna go back to your knit one, purl one. So if you still have your pegs marked, just use those same pegs. For the bind off, we are using the super stretchy bind off. So you take your working yarn, wrap around the working pegs three times, and then cut. That's just to ensure you have enough yarn to do the cast off. For the super stretchy cast off, there's really two steps to it. Your first step is to the peg, the yarn the working peg is coming from, which we're starting, it's at peg zero one you want to skip your next peg which for this time it's zero two so you will have two strands in front of that and then let me zoom this in some so we skipped a peg and now we are going to hold the working yarn underneath the stitch on the peg like you do for a purl stitch and pull it up through the bottom now we're going to go back one peg, treat it like the knit stitch, which we will take both those strands and pull the working yarn down. Oh, I dropped it, but pull the working yarn down. Now our working yarn is coming from peg zero two. So our first step again is skip one peg and then down through the top and pull it up like you would for a purl stitch. And we go back one peg and pull it down through the top like you do a knit stitch. Work this all the way around back to your first peg. We are back to our beginning. The working yarn is coming from this peg. So we are going to skip peg zero one and we're going to go ahead and work peg zero two. And then go back and get peg zero one since there are two stitches on it right now. We only want there to be one. 
we want to be hooked. It's time to take it off the loom and see what we got. Once it's off the loom, stretch it in basically every way you can so that the stitches will even out. Sometimes if you stop for a couple days and then come back to a part, uh, your tension may be a little different. But I am going to flip it inside out where I was keeping track of my rows and take those out. But at this point, the only thing left is to weave your ends in, which I like to take a tapestry needle and take the ends and just kind of go on the inside and just weave them through a bit for the bottom, up here and up here. The thumb hole here, I will still use the tapestry needle, but I will go back and forth and then just cinch it closed. And again, take the yarn on the inside. I always weave my loose strands on the inside of my project. That way, typically, if you have a strand pop out, it'll be a little more on the inside and try to weave in a couple extra inches of yarn than you really need if you can. That way, when little ends pop out, you don't have to worry if it's, uh, going to come undone or anything like that because you know you've got enough yarn in there. But just without the ends in, this is what it looks like. And you can see what this thumb hole is. So it's really not a big area to close up. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. 